something cleansing about the, the rivers. This water has been flowing down these rivers since the existence of time. The river was here before the factory. It'll be here after we're all gone. You know, there's a certain amount of responsibility that I feel to the water for that reason. There's something reassuring about that as well. Pittsburgh's um, geography lends itself to a lot of illegal dump sites, people dumping trash over hillsides, vacant lots, um, but the, also our riverfronts. I think a lot are surprised at the, the amount of trash that's on the rivers. Typically, people who live in Pittsburgh don't go down to the riverfront. Cleaning up the shoreline of the river is something that just wasn't happening. A man by the name of Nat Stone was rowing through an inland course from actually from New York all the way through down to um, the Gulf of Mexico. And when he was passing through Pittsburgh, uh, he noticed an awful lot of trash along our riverfronts. It was the dirtiest section that he was in. And ended up staying the entire summer. That year alone, they removed 62 tons of debris. The very next summer, um, Th Three Rivers Rowing Association approached us at Allegheny Cleanways and said, let's do something with this. They started this project called the Tireless Project play on words of where they were going to remove all the tires from the river so the rivers would become tireless and that the volunteers that were doing it were also tireless. We provided an alternative happy hour. Come out on a Friday and we have live music, um, libation, lots of fun and we clean up the river at the same time and it's a great way to, to see the river from th that vantage point. It's a fun event. You know we come out to the rivers, we'll, clean up the riverfront, you're on the river. A lot of the volunteers that come, it's their first exposure to the riverfronts. Empowering people to fight illegal dumping and littering uh, is a very important mission. And so people get energized by that, oh, picking up trash and, and can be fun. I wanted to know where in the city I could actually get down to the water. It's a frequent question because even though the three rivers run through town, it's actually surprisingly hard to get down to the river's edge. And I really wanted to know not just how can I go look at the water, but how could I actually get my kayak down to the river's edge. And so the water trail guide was really, I think, created for people like me that wanted to know what are the recreational paddling opportunities right in the city and out to the borders of the county. Using the guide, uh, people can plan a trip um, on the water. Uh, they can, you know, decide what kind of adventure they'd like to have. A lot of planning goes into getting your boat to the water. Using a guide, you can figure out how to drive on the, on the street grid to a place where you can park your car that's conveniently close to the place where you actually take your boat down a ramp and put it in the water. There's plenty of different opportunities to see both the city and more natural settings on the river. And then once you're out on the water, the guide is also helpful for planning where to take out because you don't always have to just make a round trip back to where you put in. You can stop along the way and use the other access points to do things like get out and eat a meal somewhere on the south side or, or uh, go shopping in the strip. You can dock your boat um, you know, put it up on a kayak rack, lock it up, go to a museum, and all these things are, are things that you can uh, figure out how to do by using the map. I'm a human animal living on the cusp of the 21st century. My name is Bob Johnson. Uh, this is Duck Hollow Debris. It's a river cube. The river cubes is uh, a kind of social sculpture. Mainstream thinking in consumer cultures regards the proper place for trash to be out of sight. As long as trash is out of sight for most, it's in the proper place, whether it's a recycling bin, dumpster, river, lake, ocean, or space. Rather than being destined to the Sisyphean task of repeatedly removing trash, I had the idea that we should collect the trash and artfully display it on site. This is combined sewage outfall A32. One of the wilder of the cubes, I decided to leave the crusher open. Uh, normally we put, close the top and crush down. On account of this motorcycle and motorcycle fork, I'd love to see this cube sited on a pedestal uh, where 54th Street meets the Allegheny River 
near the site where all of this stuff was collected from the trough that was actually created from the combined sewage outfall. My name is Carolyn Lambert, and my project was the Ohio River Lifeboat Project. It was a project to go down the Ohio River in a kind of makeshift living space aboard a boat. And I was inviting as many people as was socially possible on the boat to have both potluck dinners and one-on-one -on -one conversations with me about what their experience of the river was, what their memories were, what their current relationship or usage of the river. And I documented these in a blog that was ongoing at the time. I think that my project was really intended to highlight the river as a resource, but also to kind of warn that we have to share this river for, for both work and play that we have to be mindful of the other's needs. My name is Erin Womack and I'm working on the Drift, which is a floating platform for projects in and around the rivers in Pittsburgh. Seven artists at Carnegie Mellon, we got together. Almost none of us had any boating experience whatsoever. We wanted to collaborate on creating artworks that could be made specifically for the rivers. The first raft on just a wooden hexagon on six barrels. And a few weeks later, we built an identical platform and attached an outboard motor. The first project that we debuted the drift with, titled Iceberg. We made a large iceberg that was over 10 feet tall. Had some performers on it. And we floated it in front of PNC Park. We wanted to take advantage of this audience. We were pulled over by the Coast Guard instantly. We were able to go on, and, and it was just our first announcement. And since then, we've done everything from performances to poetry readings. We've received a, a grant from the Sprout Fund, the SEED Award. The SEED Award is helping us with publicity and getting more info about our projects out there. Which has allowed us to think beyond just the, the scope of what we can do with the drift. What we've decided to do is create a call for proposals. Which is an opportunity for other artists in Pittsburgh and even outside of the city to use the drift to implement their own projects. So beautiful. The river sides are very beautiful, especially, you know, in and around Pittsburgh. This is such a great amenity that you have right in your city. I don't usually think of a scenic trip in the city when I've taken people on that trip. I, I get the comment repeatedly that, gee, I didn't even know this was here. I've just really fallen in love with the water. We see it as a pretty iconic feature, both culturally and geographically within the city. These are the settings that I enjoy the most. The Allegheny is absolutely beautiful, and Washington's Landing is so lovely to, to ride around. There's also a spot between here and, and Duck Hollow. It feels like you're out in the middle of nowhere. You forget that you're in a city. It's just beautiful. 